name's Chris and I'm from Bootle. I'm Brian from uh, Liverpool. My name's Jack, I'm from Kirby. Um, it's a long story, really. Uh, I'm a sailor by trade. Worked for 10 years on tall ships. Fell out with my mum, fell out with my family, ended up on the streets. I used to drink a lot. So I was like 18 stone man. I was getting too drunk and causing fights and I was going to get the massive and getting killed probably. Someone gave me some wisdom but something one day and I just couldn't get drunk with it. But then it got, it got to be an amateur. My doorway become like, a, like an uh, apartment. I had decorations and all that. Freezing. <laughs> Lost my job, my flat, I'm still access to my kids a lot. I'd wait off and on in town since I was younger. I'd sort of been away from Liverpool City Centre, strangely, for a long time. And then I came in one year for my birthday. I felt my city had gone wrong. I could see these people, all these lovely buildings, fabulous gear, the girls are walking around, all look beautiful and in the corner there's people in doorways and I, I actually remember coming home and I was really, even now it makes me feel sort of very like emotional about it because I actually thought, what the hell is going on? In Liverpool in 2016, six people died from hypothermia. In the Shankly, we have three floors of car park underneath the building, and there were probably about 10 or 15 homeless people a night in there. And then when we bought Kingsway House, Kingsway House actually had a crack den in the roof. Every time we threw them out, they just found another way to get back in again. Lawrence called a meeting one morning about eight o'clock and he said, uh, I want to open a homeless shelter. And by that evening, we were already in a process of making sure that we were in a place to be able to open Kingsway House. So it was a really quick learning curve. We'd never done anything like this before. On the first night we had 16 people, the next night 32, the next night 55, and last night we had 82. So this is all about Liverpool people looking after their own. The amount of homeless that have been in here I think has surprised us all. So we're going to at least February. A community was born. Every single person's walking around with a gleaming smile on their face. Already, just in five days, it's changed people's lives. Before this, I was in a cave in Sefton Park. <laughs> Probably would have froze to death. I heard about this place and ended up coming down here. Within two weeks I was in that house. Well, people die in this type of weather. I remember peeling myself off the floor because I was frozen to the floor. It was that bitterly cold. They were coming in and they were jumping on top of radiators and they were stretching the body in such a way where every part of the body could touch the radiator and they would stay there for hours. I didn't think anyone cared, but they do. So how long were you homeless for? Seven months. And what weight did you go down to? Nice stone. And what weight are you now? Well, there's a lot of weight there, I've had you. And how many Instagram followers you got? 600. <laughs> <laughs> These people have been thrown out of all the other shelters because of their mental health issues, because of their addictions. But I think that community is the first part and the foundation of fixing that problem. There's a lot of hope, yeah. Especially with this place now, you just got to keep it going. What Lawrence has done is things you live and live, build them. It's unbelievable. Every day gets better. Suits and 
ties and a briefcase smile. Obviously, they need things to survive, shelter, food, water, pasta. We've got personal trainers, you've got yoga instructors which will be coming in regularly, hairdressers, barbers, the full works. Like when the organisations are coming in and doing these little activities, it's good for people to occupy the land and then take stress away. When this city needs anything, the people of this city come together and they were just so generous. It was unbelievable. I fundraised in a local restaurant by where I live. We raised around probably 1,200 altogether. We ended up hiring a van, going to Costco and Tesco, and we were sort of raging the, uh, the shelf of milk and the manager come over and said, we're not like a warehouse sort of thing. And when I showed him the flyer and what we were doing it for, he went behind and he come back out with about four or five big bags full of hot cross buns and stuff. And then turning up a Kingsway house with someone shouting, it's like Christmas now, isn't it? Because all the food was coming in. It makes you feel brilliant. It puts faith back in humankind. And that's all you want, isn't it? In life, someone does the shape. Yes, right. It makes you go and achieve more. Jim Jones is living in a cardboard box. I think people need to open their eyes as to what homeless exactly is and how these guys become homeless. I'm one paycheck away from homeless. Every single one of us could, could potentially go down that route. Lots of them come from really nice homes and backgrounds. It's, it's been circumstances, you know, I was talking to one guy and he had his own business and just the life pressure of the job and everything. He just lost everything. Someone just come in for someone to talk to. Yeah. They'd sit there chatting to you for two hours about and tell you the whole life story. It was loneliness. Like one guy we met, he said, I haven't spoken to anyone for four days. If I made them a cup of tea, I'd go, how are you lovely? If I didn't know them, they'd be like, are you talking to me? You'd just see them smile and you'd think, I've only said a couple of words to you and, you know, I've made the day. I've had people, men in there, say to me, oh, are you so nice to us? Well, why shouldn't I be? At the end of the day, we're here because we want to be here. They couldn't, a lot of them at first couldn't understand why women or men were coming in out of their own time. Because obviously they said people walk past us all the time. People don't look at us. So that demoralises them and makes them feel worthless, which they're not. They're going through things, but they're not worthless. And they'd come in and they'd be able to have a laugh and a joke yeah. with us, wouldn't they? And they and loved it. We became this family community and we all stuck together. Happy birthday! They've done something that a lot of people wouldn't do. They've haven't turned a blind eye. If you think about how many people and businesses and rich people are in this city that will just walk past people, signature living and put the hearts on the sleeve as well as I'm concerned. We expected people to come round and say, you know, this is an amazing thing, but instead we were faced head on with criticism. They just kept on coming after us all the time. The fire officers were in every single day. Health and safety were in all the time. EHO were coming in. Councillors were coming in. Councillors were threatening us online that they were going to close us down. So we had to comply very, very quickly with regulations, which we did. And then Nick Small comes out in the press and says, I'm going to make sure this place closes. It was never about a PR angle. We're only ever here to look after the homeless people, to give them shelter, warmth and safety. We never once said that we were going to attack their addiction or attack their mental health issues. We clearly do not have the knowledge to do that. That is the council. At the end of the day, we don't want to be on the front pages of papers saying Liverpool City, you know, they're dying because there's, there's, no, there's no shelter for them. It's just so sad because it just doesn't need to be like that. There's loads of empty buildings. Liverpool spent £12,000 on average with every single person that went to rehab last year and there was 100 people that went to rehab 
Only five people come through the other end. 95 people just go round the system on a regular basis. That's 1.1 million that we're throwing away every single year. Now, I accept it's a very difficult situation, but what I can't accept is that we've never changed the system. Why haven't we changed the system to meet the issue? The system, he were looking at me and just saying to me, do that, and if you can't do that, then that's what's done with you, mate. I would say that 90% of all the people that ended up in our shelter had some sort of fundamental trauma, and that trauma then manifests itself in either depression or mental health. It spirals out of control into issues such as drug abuse and alcoholism. And so we're, as a society, and particularly in this city, we're letting these people down, is that we're not getting the access to mental health support that we need. I just want to get my life back, get my own little place, uh, somewhere, you know, I can shut my own front door. I want to change. Hopefully it's going to get better, isn't it? You lose yourself in that system. The big difference between ourselves and other organisations who are trying to help, we don't control them, we're not, we don't, we're not here to treat it like a prison, we're not here to tell people how to live, we're, we're here to help. When anyone walks into Kingsway House, you were greeted with a cuddle. You're getting greeted by people that haven't had a friendship, or they had a friendship, the friendship is based upon survival. Where do I get my next fix? Where can I beg? How do I get fed? It's a different set of rules for them than what it is for us. And you have to realise what those rules are in order to try and understand how to create the remedy to fix the problem. They had given up hope on life. They felt that they didn't want to engage with other organisations in the city because they'd either had previously poor experiences with those agencies or there were other people staying in those hostels and, and, and homeless shelters which they didn't want to mix with for whatever reason. So there's clearly a gap in Liverpool as a city for a place like Kingsway House. There's no system that can be put in place for the people on the streets better than the people on the streets. That's what, that's what I've been barking up at the council. When someone tries to interfere with their community and give them rules, it's not going to work. You show support, you gain respect. It's that, it's that simple and that's the difference. Me personally, I've got a dr drug and alcohol problem. When you've got substance abuse, a lot of places won't give you housing or you can't afford it. Everyone deserves warmth and housing, no matter where you come from or what, you, especially in this country, the wealth it's got. And I do think a lot of the money just gets squandered in the wrong direction, to be honest. The area has had a drug problem for many years, so much so that the local councillors have had five email complaints every single month for a five-year period. In the four-month period that we opened Kingsway House, they had one complaint of drugs being taken in the area. sad because it's helped a lot of people, a lot of people were sad when it closed down. It's probably, as, as everyone says, it's probably saved lives, this place has been open through the winter months. Well, well I know, it has saved lives. Our defined long-term goal was to make sure that we took a homeless person from a doorway into a warm, safe environment. So we let them know that they were wanted and needed, and then we take them to the next phase. And then before they know it, they would get their own accommodation and then they would go to rehabilitation and then they would come back to us and then they would get a full-time job. We created a community here and we wanted to keep it going and we were stopped. And the fact of the matter is that those 150 people a day that were getting fed have now gone on the streets and they're still begging. And if they want to get out of that world, they'll want to get to rehabilitation and they may just may get back to a normal life. I thought the council would have picked up where we've left off. I know he's got Labrae House, but you'd still see a lot of our friends out on the streets. And I can see the deterioration in them. At least when the shelter was open, there was hot drinks, food for them every day. Obviously, they can still go out and beg and do whatever they need to do. That's them, that's their life they chose. But now they're begging for whatever needs they've got, plus food. So the food takes a back seat. So you're seeing these people that were looking okay, and they were putting weight on, and they were happier in themselves, and they look 
half themselves to look ill when you see them on the street now. It's not over. Hopefully we're going to do something again um, the next winter because, you know, unfortunately the homeless is on the rise. I just think it should be ongoing. It should not be just doing something over a 12-week period in the winter. And I think Lawrence has proved that it can be done because he's had quite a few successes out of Kingsway House. I'd have been dead now if I hadn't been for Signature Living and everyone else. I, wouldn't have, I don't think I'd have seen Christmas. So what we've managed to do with some of the people who came through Kingsway House is to set them up in business. We had uh, below Kingsway House a multi-storey car park. Lawrence has gifted that to Brian's business, which we've called Mr Old Hall Street. And that's given Brian and the others their life back. I was in, in a doorway for seven and a half months, freezing. And I want to feel like a king every day. Can't wait to get up every day, get out, get out there and start work. The future is looking very bright. I remember one or two years ago of walking past Brian in Old Hall Street and now he's become one of my best friends. I couldn't, I couldn't begin to think of life without Brian to be honest. Where I've stayed in the doorway in Old Hall Street, I changed my life there. The last three days it's been busy, the car park's been full on a daily basis, which is fantastic. And also was attracting more business for the jet wash as well. So we seem to be taking over Lawrence. It's fantastic. No, <laughs> thanks to Lawrence. It's unbelievable what Lawrence has did for us. Our main aim now is to obviously keep customers happy in here and build the business and, and do well. Oh, I'm getting a new set of teeth off Lawrence. <laughs> I'm terrified to go and get them. <laughs> Got a few little other benches. Oh, we're going to do a tuck shop, aren't we? That's the next thing for them. Yeah, yeah. We're going to get a tuck shop. We're going to look for the next homeless man. We want to change his life. Manager's tuck shop, yeah. So, fingers crossed.